if you have sleep apnea and you're currently losing a lot of weight, perhaps you're taking a GLP-1, you might have asked yourself the question, do I still need CPAP or can I ditch the mask? Today, I'm gonna to show you what to look for on Sleep HQ because over the next few years, there will be hundreds of thousands of people popping GLP-1 meds, losing 15, 20, 25, 30% of their body weight. And that's gonna do dramatic things to your sleep quality, to your blood oxygen, to your CPAP therapy requirements, your pressure requirements. And you can track all this right here on Sleep HQ. You can track your weight, your steps, your active energy, your blood oxygen, your pulse rate, all your CPAP therapy data right here, sleephq.com. So do it, it's amazing. And we're gonna be taking a look at a real Sleep HQ success story, Daniel. He's been on Wagovi for six months, only a small dose, and he's lost a massive 72 pounds. And in that time, over those uh, six months, he's been dropping down his CPAP pressure, nine, eight, seven, six. And he's monitoring his AHI and his blood oxygen levels. And he's got to a point where he's down to five now. And he's like, shit, am I gonna get off this? Do I even need this now? And so we're gonna take a look at the charts. I'm gonna show you what to look for and how you can track all this information. Now we'll start by taking a look at the trend view. And I love the trend view. You get to step back, zoom out, and take a look at the big picture. Identify those trends over time. And we'll start with the AHI. This is the apnea hypopnea index. And it's a measurement of how many respiratory disturbances a patient experiences on average per hour per night. And the goal is to get that number as low as possible, ideally under five. And this is sort of step one. Because as I said previously, Daniel is gradually dropping his therapy pressure. And what we don't want to see is the AHI start trending up because that means that there's not enough positive airway pressure to maintain a stable airway and stop the collapse, okay? And as we can see right here, since January to August, it hasn't been trending up. So this is tick one. Now the AHI is just one measurement that we need to monitor here on Sleep HQ. Now let's scroll down a bit further. All right, here we go. So this is the pressure. So back in Jan, we can see nine centimeters, and then he drops it down to eight, and then he drops it down to 7.6, down to seven, down to six, down to five. Let's scroll down a little bit further. All right. So here we have the weight. He's tracking his weight on Sleep HQ and you can see it's just falling off him. And this is what's happening. All these people taking the GLP-1s, on average they're losing 15, 20% of their body weight. It's having a dramatic impact on their therapy, their breathing, their sleep. All right, so here he comes. And he's sort of plateaued down here now, which might be why, if we come down here a bit further, you can see how there's a bit of a trend here in the active energy. He's exercising more, maybe because he's trying to maintain that stable weight. You know, there's a little bump here. So he's sort of he's gone from 185 to 188. It's only three pounds. But you can see when that happened, he started exercising more. And that's the beauty of tracking these things. And that's why you know, I think you should all be stepping on the scales because it gives you that reference. And when it's staring you in the face all the, all the time, you can do something about it. You go, mm, don't like the way that's trending. Oh, three pounds. Let's put in a bit more effort. You know, look at his steps here. Like back in Jan, he's doing what, 3,000, three to 4,000 a day. Look at him now. What's he doing now? 11,000, 9,000, 11,000, 12,000, 18,000. I mean, like every day is nearly 10,000. And this is why the GLP-1 movement is just so powerful. I mean, it's, it's like it's a circuit breaker. I put out a survey the other week. I've had 300 respondents already. And 70% of these GLP-1 users said, yes, 
they would recommend the use to a friend or family member that's struggling with weight and sleep apnea. I think that speaks volumes. And just think next year, like right now you've got to jab yourself with an injection once a week. Next year, pill form. Crazy stuff. All right. Um, now, I want to show you this. So this chart here, flow limit. This is airflow limitation. And it's a measurement of upper airway resistance. We're not talking like full on collapse, like your apneas and your hypopneas that are measured in the AHI. These are more subtle, but you're still fighting for air. Breathing is still difficult. It's gonna cause a lot of sleep disturbance. And this is what's really interesting. So all these studies, Eli Lilly, Sermat OSA, that are looking at these GLP-1s, they're going, oh, 50% of users no longer need CPAP because the AHI is less than five. When you dig a bit deeper, they never show you like the ODI, oxygen desaturation index, the RDI. They never show you like the fine details. It's always that top line AHI stuff. Come down here, look at the airflow limitation and your oxygen desaturation index, much more powerful. And what we can see here, which is interesting, is it's not as noticeable, but if you kind of look at the yellow, well, you can kind of see it. I mean, it's definitely trending up. You can see it, I can definitely see it, all right? Stand back, zoom out. Can you see that? Can you see it increasing? Let's switch to the daily dashboard and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, so here we are on the daily view. We've switched from the trend view to the daily dashboard. And this is April 29th. And I think he scored a bullseye. He has apnea hypopnea index 0, 0.0. He's on 7.6 centimeters. All right, we'll come down here. So here's his breathing. I'll zoom in here. Look at this breathing. This is good looking breathing right here. All right, it's beautiful. See how it's nice and even. You could almost put a ruler across the top and bottom. Blood oxygen level below. He's measuring this with a sleep HQO2 ring. Look at that, just beautiful blood oxygen level, beautiful breathing. Okay, it's really nice. Now, I reset the charts. Here, we can see the levels of airflow limitation. See here? All right. Now, the closer these little bars, I'll just zoom in again. See these little bars here? The closer that gets to one, the greater the level of airflow resistance. You're fighting harder to get the air in and you can kind of see it. Can you see how, you know, it's getting a little bit wavy. It's not as nice and clean as it was before. It's still very, very good, but you can see there's a bit of a change here in the breathing pattern. Now, let's go to another day. So this is now June 28th, so recent, and he's dropped his pressure now to seven only a little bit, the apnea hypopnea index is still really good, 0.31. If we come down here, the breathing's still looking pretty good. He's doing all right, but look at this here. See this great big jump in airflow limitation? Now it's up at 0.71. And if we zoom in on the breathing, <laughs> see that? Now this isn't captured in the AH. I that you're all looking at on my air and all the physicians are looking at it as well. No one is monitoring this stuff, guys. And this is why it's so important. This is not good breathing quality. It's gonna cause a lot of sleep disturbance. That's what ARERA is, respiratory effort related arousals. <laughs> Made myself look like quite the rookie there. Um, it's too long anyway, they need to shorten that phrase up. Right, but it's not good breathing, and this is sleep disturbance, okay? So, and you can see it in the O2, so now the O2 is down at 93, 92. Right, not picked up. Certainly wasn't picked up in the Surmount OSA trial, okay? But this is why you need to monitor this stuff, because your AHI, it's likely always gonna be good, but you come down here, look at your blood oxygen levels, look at your airflow limitation, and that will give you the green light 
if you can come off CPAP. All right. Tick the AHI, and then this is the next part you need to tick, your blood oxygen levels. We're gonna take a look at that now, okay? Have a look at the average SpO2. This is the average blood oxygen levels. Look at it, it's down at 92.7 when he's heavier. But just look at this beautiful trend. Just trending up so nicely. But can you see something? Like we hit this point here where it's really good. But can you see that it's just like ever so slightly trending downwards, kind of? Now something else that he can do is generate a detailed comparison report on Sleep HQ, comparing two different time frames. So we're gonna compare January when he first started and take a look at how that compares with August. So we just come up here to reports and then you'll just add new detailed comparison report here. Put in your focus month or your focus week and away you go, pretty self-explanatory but I've already created mine here. So I'll click the share link. Boom, there we go. Now we do have an AI overview of the results. So AI has gone in there, compared the results, and it's given us the highlights, the lowlights, the trends, and so on. If you wanna read through this, I'll put a link in the description down below. You can check out the report. But we're gonna scroll down here. Here we go. So we got January 2025 versus July 2025. And you can see here the AHI hasn't changed much, 0 0.21 to 0 0.26. But if we come down a bit further, we can see here that the flow limitation has actually improved. This is what we wanna see. You won't get this anywhere else. And we come down a bit further, improvements in the oxygen. And this is all happening while he's dropping his pressure down. Right, so we've got here, the O2 average has gone from 92.9 to 95. It's increasing. Time below 90% oxygen. In January, he had five hours, 34 minutes and 22 seconds spent, time spent below 90. Not good. Now it's only four minutes. It's an improvement of 98%. Here we go. Total drops 3%. Originally 654 in Jan, now it's only 210. And we've also got the heart stuff there. Once again, more improvements. Oh, this will be interesting, the sleep stuff. What have we got here? Look at this. <laughs> sleep HQ for the win. Look at this. Uh, tracking the sleep data as well. Look at this improvement in REM. 13% improvement in REM. Look at this deep sleep improvement, 20%. Happy days. Now the next step for Daniel is to drop his pressure once again from five down to four, which is as low as it can go. Maybe run that for two weeks, do a detailed comparison report, check your trends, look at your AHI, airflow limitation, your blood oxygen levels, your 3%, your 4% drops. And if it's all looking good and it's still trending in the right direction, the next step is see you later where your sleep HQO touring, and if your blood oxygen level's looking good, you don't have lots of desaturations, you're feeling good, sleep's looking good, you can kiss CPAP, <laughs> goodbye, see you later. And that, my friends, is how you can come off CPAP. Have a great day. Until next time, sleep well, look after you mates, and I'll see you soon, cheers.